Good morning, Madam President, Fire Commissioners, morning. Chief Terrazas, Attorney Radfish, Ms. Gomez, Eric Scott, Captain 2, Public Information Officer. As Dr. Eckstein just mentioned, there was a multiple cardiac arrest uh, survivors over the recent past, and we have another excellent example of this today. And we're going to recognize a team of firefighters that saved a man's life that dropped dead at a car wash in August of 2018. At this point, it'd be uh, nice to have these members to please stand near the podium. It'd be Captain Kenneth Codaro, Firefighters Garrett Wasserman, Scott Cleland, and Richard Othon. Now, to paint the picture a little bit for this incident, it took place approximately a year and a half ago. It was a time period similar to right now, a typical sunny day in South Los Angeles, when a 43-year-old male decided to drive his car to a local car wash. Now, while he was there and he was standing, he started to tell bystanders he wasn't feeling very well. Then he suddenly collapsed on the ground dead. Fortunately, a nearby civilian who recently learned CPR just two weeks prior started uh, chest compressions. He jumped in and played that critical role, um, uh, giving that link of survival. So then when our firefighter paramedics arrived on scene, they did find the patient pulseless in agonal respirations. They took over CPR. They placed an airway adjunct in that patient's mouth. They began uh, breathing for him with a bag valve mask and oxygen. And then the patient's initial heart rhythm was a lethal ventricular fibrillation, just a quivering of the heart. These members recognized that immediately. They appropriately shocked that patient's heart with 200 uh, joules of electricity. They resumed two minutes of CPR. And at that point, they continued to uh, breathe for him. And they then were able to check his um, heart rhythm again, and it was determined that, in fact, uh, he had a return of spontaneous circulation. Uh, at that point, then, they uh, began to uh, transport him to a local hospital, and often that's where our, our stories will end with these patients. But we wanted to take a, a minute more and not just gloss over the continued critical steps that are really required by this skilled team to successfully keep a patient alive. So just to mention a few, at that point, they have to perform a 12-lead EKG on the heart to get a much closer look. At that point, they determined it was in a, what we call sinus TAC, which is a much better rhythm. So then they adjust their actions appropriately. They look at things like capnography that will monitor the concentration of carbon dioxide in the respiratory system. They look at SpO2, which is the oxygen in the blood. And then they would start a, an IV like normal, but this individual had poor vascular access. So they actually started an inner osseous IV, meaning they took a metal needle, put it into the tibia of the left leg to give the needed uh, drugs in the event he went back into cardiac arrest. And then they transported to the appropriate STEMI center. So th actions continued to go on to make sure that this fragile patient was successful. Um, we did get an update on the patient, so we're happy to say that uh, that patient is doing well. We received an email from them. But at this point, we would say, don't take our word for it. We are honored to have uh, Mr. Isaac Diaz to be able to walk in, the cardiac arrest survivor, and he could meet uh, his rescuers here. Earlier, we saw the dramatic rescue from the high-rise fire at the Barrington Plaza. And this, this incident that uh, was described as well had uh, equal impact. We saved a life. You can't put a value on a human life. Uh, I'm tremendously proud of the men and women of our department. Every day, uh, they handle about 1,350 calls each 24-hour period. And during the course of those calls, we have uh, runs like this where we're successful and runs where we're not. Uh, it's, it, we should celebrate these types of victories. Uh, I think it's uh, good for the morale and the mental health of our people. They know that uh, there are times we can be successful. That kind of offsets the times that we can't. And we know now that uh, 
that we need to do more to support our mental health of our people. So, Mr. Diaz, having you here is outstanding for uh, our people to know that their efforts can be rewarded by survivors like yourself. Dr. Eckstein talked about the chain of survival. In this case, everything worked. And because it did, Mr. Diaz is here with us today. And uh, I can't be more proud of the members of Fire Station 15. And I'm very, very grateful that uh, Mr. Diaz was able to join us here today to join in celebrating the hard work and achievement of our people. And with that, I would like to turn it over to the captain from 15s. He would like to say a few words. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Ken Cordero. I actually work at Fire Station 64. Uh, that day I was working an overtime day. And uh, it speaks to the professionalism of the crew that's there that somebody can come from an outside station. And I know and I'm comfortable with the people that I come in and I work with. And they do perform well. They do it every day. They're a very, very busy station. And you, sir, uh, if you, you couldn't have picked a better street corner to have a cardiac arrest that day. Um, there was a, uh, yeah, you, 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 went, you went right instead of left, maybe. I don't know what you did. But the, uh, the young man that was there that day, uh, when I, we arrived, he was doing, um, I remarked to the, to the guy, I said, man, that guy's doing some really good CPR. And it was a, a young man doing, like I said, doing compressions. Um, and I spoke to him afterwards as we were loading you up. And I said, uh, you know, you did a real good job. I, I want you to know that, that what you're, you know, is proper, what you were doing. And he said that's when we found out that uh, it was only two weeks prior. He had actually just completed a course in uh, CPR. So, as I said, whatever brought you to that street corner that day, the confluence events came together, and I'm glad to see you standing here. So, thank you very much. I, 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 how do you thank the people that save your life? I mean, you not only – saved my life, but I'm married, so you impacted my wife. I have two boys, 16 and 14. You impacted them. Um, this past Friday, my mom passed away, and I got to do something that I wanted to do. I'm her only child, so I got to bury her. She didn't get to bury me. So that's the kind of, that's what you guys do. You guys do that on a daily basis, and you guys touch lives on a daily basis, and it trickles. So from the truly from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> I appreciate everything. 